Skeleton King pairs really well with Skarmie and Graveyard, something that you don't want to ignore. Ability aside, with his normal attack, it already deals a lot of damage. Really easy to counter. You don't want a full health Skeleton King connecting to your tower. It's almost like letting a Knight connect. Decent amount of damage. Considering how easy they are to defend, there's no reason to just let him connect to your tower. There's like no damage to the Dark Prince because his special ability is that he has a 1.3 tile splash radius. So he's going to wreck Skarmy. Also, the only thing that he can one shot is Skarmy and stab goblins one shot but other than that it's gonna take a few more hits the nice thing is that you can collect up to 20 souls for his ability and resummon them that's actually pretty threatening you don't want to ignore that either it is gonna cost two elixir for 20 second cooldown so use it sparingly if you don't collect any souls it's gonna spawn six right off the bat that is not worth it whether it's your skeletons the enemy skeletons whether it's wall breakers or even ice spirit or fire spirit these all count as souls even when they jump that counts as a soul so normally it's a good idea to pull them into the middle but even with a valkyrie look at all those skeletons connecting to the tower with the skeleton king tanking for all those skeletons right now that's over a thousand damage just because you tried to pull the skeleton king to get a little bit more damage in this case you're definitely going to want to put the valkyrie near the bar so that anything that trickles is going to be splashed by her. That just completely takes care of all the skeletons so they don't connect to the tower. Here's the mistake that everyone makes when they first see this card. They treat it like a graveyard. Yeah, it tanks like a graveyard and yeah, it spawns like a graveyard, but it's more like a frontal Skarmy for two elixir. He may be the worst of the three champions, but he's still one of the best cards in the game. This card works really well when you can charge up his super with graveyard, Skarmy, witch. It just works really well in bait decks. So y'all know how the giant is thick and you usually want to put units in front so it kind of blocks the musketeer from walking to build up a bigger push well the skeleton king has a hitbox almost twice as big as the giant weighs as much as the giant so when you have a ram rider coming it actually does a really good job of blocking her path and just completely stopping it if you have a support unit like a musketeer or a little bit more damage like an electro spirit he's just thick here's a real world example of him blocking the ram rider really 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 well the opponent put the Ram Rider down the bridge, and he just straight up blocked the Ram Rider the entire time. She is not getting through at all. Look at that struggle. That is just obnoxiously thick and heavy. He is one of the thickest cards in the game. Look at him just clip the poison. His hitbox is so big. The Electro Wizard, it's not going to get clipped by the poison. The Prince, it's not going to get clipped by the poison. This is just to show how big he is. He's going to get clipped by spells a little bit easier just because of that extra range. He is thick. He's got a little bit more health than a Prince and a Bowler, but they're still going to wreck him. In this situation, you probably want to activate it immediately just so that the skeletons can tank for him and distract for everything else while he does work on it. For that two elixir, he just wrecks the prince and it's a completely different interaction. Now imagine if I had spats or a skarmy to support that, I'd have 20 skeletons. So while the bowler does a really good job at defending against the golden knight because of the knockback and a really good job at the queen, even with her invisibility, he's going to be able to tank a little shot and knock her back just to deal all of that damage. It's not going to knock back the skeleton king but he's not that strong and if he doesn't have a fully charged meter he's still gonna be fully countered by the bowler but he doesn't get knocked back that's the key difference here maybe they're just going crazy with skarmy one lane and skeleton king in the other lane your bowler gets overwhelmed by everything the skeletons connect to the tower and you take out the bowler and deal over 1500 damage to the tower <laughs> So because of this, Mega Knight's not going to knock him back, but it's still going to fully counter him and take out all the skeletons. In a perfect world, maybe you put him in the back and you've got Graveyard on the left side. You've got him pressuring on the right side. He's just devouring all those souls, connects. He just shines really well in split lane pressure. Look at all those beautiful skeletons. That's the dream right there. And that's how you play Skeleton King with a 30 elixir push and they don't defend. If you've got a full bar going on, sometimes an early cast is very worth it because the front skeletons might connect or maybe they try to defend with a P.E.K.K.A. or something and your skeletons tank for all that and it foils their P.E.K.K.A. plan. Look at those two skeletons alone. Even if I defended that, that would still be 600 damage because of those two skeletons in the front. Let's say there's a bit of an early cast right there. It's not going to do much. Those skeletons, they're going to connect to the tower. Skeleton King is still tanking for that. You got those two skelly boys on there. And that's the devastation about this. Early cast is okay. 
He's just very good at split lane pressure. If you know that they can't commit to one card in both lanes, now that they've defended that side, they don't have the minions to defend against everything on the left side, and that's just gonna be a tower damage, maybe, depending how you push. But if you know full well that they have no splashers, then just put all of your swarm in one lane. You don't need to dual pressure. Just finish them off. If they only have a musketeer, if they only have a prince, if they only have a P.E.K.K.A. If you know that they don't have any splashers, just commit everything into that one lane. Ain't no way they're gonna be able to defend any of that with all the skeletons. Just rush everything. You know they don't have Tornado. They don't have Executioner. They don't have no splash. It's gonna wreck their Prince, Lumberjack, Collector Wizard. Just take everything out. Kind of rare though, unless you're uh, <laughs> in mid ladder and the decks are weird. Let's say you play a Skarmie on defense. That's a straight infinite value and you've recouped all the souls. Look how thick he is. He just pushed that Ice Golem out of the way. In this case, casting it a bit earlier, just make sure that the prince is distracted completely. I got one skeleton connected to the tower. He's tanking for everything. I shouldn't have even played the Ice Golem. It's as easy as one, two ability. So I should go without saying by now that bait cards work really, really, really well with the Skeleton King. And then split pressuring the other lane. Just knowing that that barrel is going to get countered. Feed him the souls. And now that they've used arrows or whatever they did to counter the bait on the left side, they can't counter on the right side. Maybe they put down the Executioner. This card is a lot harder to play than Archer Queen, but it provides a ton of value in bait decks. The Skeleton was used seven times in CRL. Right off the back, just to bank all of those skeletons from that skeleton barrel because he already knew that it was going to be countered. Oh, and those bats, not only to counter the Electro Wizard, but to rank up those souls. Is he going to activate? Oh, he doesn't activate. Oh, because the Mega Knight would have countered it. We got Elsiop, one of the world champions of Clash Rail. Right now, he's building up another push with Skeleton King in the back. Skarmy to defend the Archer Queen. That is just value. That's free souls. Bats? I think he's gonna activate an ability if he's got bats going on. There's the ability activation! Oh! Took out the fisherman and everything, but it does activate the king tower. Skeleton king right at the bridge. Interesting. That snowball just means he's got souls. I think that's gonna be an early activation right about there. Gets hooked. That is so value. That is so value. That one spear goblin's connecting and everything. Takes out the fisherman. That was 500 damage. So he's going with a skeleton barrel spear goblin push on the right side. And he's gonna put down skeleton king on the bottom. Just to recollect all of those souls and reclaim them. Skeleton Barrel connects on the right side for damage. Fisherman doesn't completely counter it. Goes in with a fireball for that last damage from the six second overtime. Counters the miner with the Skeleton King. My goodness. He predicted a frontal outside miner. Wow. This one's a bit different. Igor's got a graveyard going on. You got Bowler going in. He's not going to activate the King ability, especially because there's no souls. It just ain't worth it. What's interesting about this matchup is that Igor not once activated the King ability. Just because you have it doesn't mean you need to use it. That's minus two elixir. He's just treating the Skeleton King like a four elixir knight to defend stuff and all these things. He already connected with the Graveyard early on. That one Graveyard connection, he just defended, didn't overcommit, didn't use the King ability once this entire match. Bandit's coming in, he's gonna use Skeleton King, I think. Right over there, just near the King Tower, just so that it takes it out a little bit faster. Oh, he just went in real aggressive with the Skarmy. Now he's got full souls going on. He's going to activate it. He doesn't. I would have activated it because I'm really impulsive and just seeing those skeletons is really satisfying. But then again, I could never compete for a million dollars in CRL because uh, this goes to show. Don't always activate the ability just because you can. So there's a bandit. He's defending the Goblin Brawler and the Bandit with Skarmy. And then he's going to put down the Skeleton King in the back right as it crosses the bridge so they can reclaim a lot of those souls. It's kind of interesting. He had to put down Spear Goblins to take that out. He might do an early activation about right here. Skeleton King is still tanking for the tower. And the Goblin Barrel connects with all of that. Golden Knight doesn't matter. Wow. But at the end, unfortunately, he got overwhelmed. The Skeleton King's only got 2,300 health. It's not enough to defend against all of that. The Zappies, the Flying Machine, everything connects. The Flying Machine's already connected on the tower. And that is a win for Air Surfer. Here's another one too. Bats in the front, Skeleton King in the back right before the bats die. So it doesn't matter if you split them. He's up five souls now, and that's going to be an 11 skeleton ability. That might not be worth it for an ability activation, but the lightning does take out the queen. The cannon card is doing work to that Mega Knight. Is that an... I, 
that would activate the ability. Oh, I'm so greedy. But this is to go to show. Don't always activate just because you can, no matter how satisfying it is. The Skeleton King has a 1.3 tile hit radius. So that's actually a pretty good defense against Royal Hogs. So he's going in with a Skeleton Barrel on the right side, knowing full well that they're going to defend it. And he's going to have full souls on his Skeleton King now. Where's the, where's the activation? Do the activation. Do it. Do it. I didn't do it. He doesn't need the damage on the left side. That's fair. Oh, man. I would be activating that ability every single time. The biggest thing I learned from watching these CRL plays is don't activate it just because you can. It's too elixir. Do it. Do it. Activate it. He activated it. Yes. Finally. Finally. Thank you. That actually did a pretty decent amount to the Megan. I didn't take it down half, but it did some damage. It's triple elixir now. He's got a giant skeleton kind of in the back. That lightning did deal a lot of damage with the Mega Knight. That, that skeleton king's gonna die right off the bat, but there are two freaking cannon carts on the map right now. Oh, he needed the royal recruit, the royal delivery for those minion hordes. Going in there, I would love to see a giant skeleton king. Oh, not quite enough for that. There's the ability activation with the skeleton barrel. There ain't no way. That goblin cage wasn't enough. Those skeletons connect to the tower. That is so satisfying. That queen died. That, that queen's dead. That queen's dead. Oh, man. So close. Just a lot of pressure with the Skeleton King. So the biggest thing that we learned is that the Skeleton King is a really good card, but it works very specifically in bait decks and you don't always want to activate the ability. 